Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to Last Train Home. In this sponsored video, we're going to have a look at this new game. It just got released on November 28th, only a couple days ago by the time that you're watching this video. And it takes place in a situation that I know pretty much nothing about, which made it really interesting because I got curious. It is just after World War I. The major powers have stopped fighting, but the Russian Civil War has not. And this is important. You are, in essence, a neutral power. You are part of the Czechoslovak Legion. In case you've never heard of these, like I didn't, um, you're a force comprised of Czechs and Slovaks fighting on the side of the Entente powers during World War I and the White Army. Your goal is to win the support of the Allied powers and get independence from the Bohemian Crown. So this way you're starting your own nation, hopefully. But you're still caught inside the Russian Civil War. Your objective in this game, in this story, really, is to try and get home. And in order to get there, you're going to have to take a train to Vladivostok, but not any train. This is one of those armored trains. You're in control of the train, you're in control of squads, you're in control of the story. There is a lot to unpack, so let's dig in. Now, the first thing you need to know is that this is a game that works on several different levels. On the one hand, you have an RTS. This is pretty much it. It is, how should I describe it? A bit of a blend between squad-based tactics, i.e. you only have a couple of different units. These units all have their own different weaponry. They have their own different traits. They have their own different perks and skills. And you can affect these by promoting them, having them execute certain actions in the game and promote them to, well, whatever role you see fit for them. Because not only will they have a role on the RTS mode that you're currently looking at, but also on the train mode, which is something I will show you a little later. They have a couple of stats. Some of these are going to be more important to their role than others. Uh, for example, the charisma stat is not exactly useful when you're trying to fight, but something like charisma will come in very useful when you might be able to talk your way out of a problem as opposed to shoot your way out of a problem. Because keep in mind, you're basically surrounded. You are trying desperately not to draw attention to either being part of the White Army or the Red Army. You're just trying to get home. And in order to do that, you're going to have to, well, fight your way to neutrality. Or rather, fight to stay neutral. Because if you don't, you might make some very, very powerful enemies, which could impede your way home. The game consists of nine chapters. There's a total of 40 missions that you can do. All of these advance the story. All of these will get you resources, will get you the ability to upgrade your train. And with that, you're going to have to manage a lot of different supplies. It is not just down to the ammunition of your soldiers, it is also down to the amount of food that you have on the train, the amount of fuel that you have on the train, the way that you can heal your soldiers, because if you run out of medicine or if you don't have a doctor on your crew, you might not be able to get your soldiers back up to full strength. Now, in this part of the story, we are trying to just get some food. We're trying to trade with the local millers. We're trying to get some food. The problem is the mills have been burned down. And this is already where we're starting to struggle with staying neutral. Because it is the Reds that have burned down the mills. You might encounter situations where you're going to have to make a choice. Do I want to intervene or not? And in this way, the game kind of reminded me about Star Trek, the Prime Directive. Do we want to intervene in this particular situation where we don't really have a stake? Are we going to just intervene because it's the human thing to do? Or is that going to make life very dangerous for us? And will it impede our ability to get home? These are the kinds of choices that you will have to make in the last train home. After a bit of scouting around, you do find the guys most likely responsible for not only looting, but also burning down the mills and basically leaving the civilians to die. And you can see that your soldiers, they all have something to say about it. Some are going to argue that we are definitely going to have to interfere, that these people might strike again. Others are not so keen to intervene because that's going to break the diplomatic neutrality that we have, or at least that you still have at the moment. 
During missions, you can also be asked what you think. Do you think that you have to be neutral? Or do you think about what would happen to the civilians? Or how much more death and suffering we could have prevented? There's no real right or wrong choice. There's just the choice that you think is right. What does your morality say? Or are you just going to be so straightforward and go, well, sorry, not my circus, not my monkeys. Uh, I'm not going to intervene here. I'm just trying to get home because I too have a family to get home to. All of that might also affect how your soldiers see you. Once you've completed a mission, you're going to enter this view. On the map, you can dictate what comes next. Well, to some extent, you're driving a train. You kind of don't really have a choice whether you go left or right most of the time. But you can see what the stats of the train are. Top left, we have a couple of management buttons. Top right, we have various resources. And when it comes to the bottom, this is where you indicate what your speed is going to be. Do you want to get somewhere really quickly because you might be trying to outrun something? Well, that's possible, but it will cost you fuel efficiency. And if you run out of fuel while you're running, well, good luck, because you're going to have to be standing your ground and fighting. The various cars that you're currently looking at can be upgraded as you progress through the story. And as such, you can have a pretty serious impact with your train on how the story develops. It is not just your mode of transportation. This thing can also directly interfere in missions, as you will see in a bit. As much as it would be lovely just to ride a train to Vladivostok, catch a ship and go back home, that would make for a very boring game. So basically at every turn you're going to be challenged. You're going to be challenged by the Reds, you might at some point be challenged by the Whites, you're going to have to trade for resources that you're running low on or potentially trade away a surplus. And in this particular standoff, we are encountering a red general. Is this going to turn into a fight or is our major Gazdik going to be able to talk us out of this one? I would much rather talk us out of this one because it is quite likely that we're going to be majorly outgunned. Even though we have an artillery platform on the train, I'm not so sure I want to take my chances with it. Thankfully, the Major talked down the Red General, but now we still have to try and find some supplies. And this is where the squad editor first comes up. Over here you can pick what soldiers you want on the mission. Of course, you can go for a very well-rounded team. Have a machine gunner, a healer, a grenadier, a sniper, and potentially a general rifleman. Or you might need a more stealthy squad. Particular soldiers will have particular talents, and this is where a bit of squad management a la XCOM or Jagged Alliance comes in. Early game, you'll not really have a whole lot of choice. Um, there are only a few combat units that I have on this train. The rest are basically workers on the train. They might be the one driving it, they might be the cooks, they might be the healers. Um, you got all sorts of people that you need to keep the train running. From what I've seen so far, I really like the interaction between, on the one hand, this, let's say, squad-based... No, it's not turn-based tactics, but um, let's say real-time tactics, RTT, I guess. And on, then, on the other hand, you got the train level. So the more strategic, how am I going to manage all of my forces? The whole interaction between the two, so far, seems to be really well done. Now, we find over here a wounded civilian. So, time to heal them up and see what just happened here. The story that you'll get from this civilian is not exactly positive. Anybody who refused to help the Reds or refused to cooperate simply got shot. This, of course, is not exactly going to build your sympathy for the Red Army, even if you had one in the first place. The Red Army came for recruits, we told them to leave, but they just laughed and took whatever they wanted, and they killed everyone who resisted. Also, they got some artillery shells, so guess what your new part of this mission now is. We're gonna have to locate these trucks, and, um, shall we say, remove them from enemy hands. And this is basically the first time where you're actually going up against the Reds and deciding what your role is going to be in this conflict. The game's not giving you an option, because I think this is still part of the onboarding of the game. And it basically goes, yep, this is the target, this is the objective, this is what you're going to do. Of course, it's not going to be so simple as to walk up to that Red Army base and blow up some trucks. 
Now the bridge has been destroyed and we're going to have to find a way to fix it. So we need to get a repair kit and with that repair kit fix the bridge. Of course, there are some other things that are not strictly related to the quests that you can find if you just scout out the map. So there is definitely a bonus in taking your time to run around the map and not just go directly for the objective. You don't have to. Currently, there's no timer. Maybe in future missions there will be, but right now there is not. Now over here we've encountered our first couple of red soldiers, and this is something I didn't know back at the time. But if you hit spacebar, you're going to go into tactical view. This is basically a tactical pause, allowing you to set up your soldiers, and setting up allows you to, well, much better prepare for an engagement. As you can see, most of my guys are out of position, out of cover, and only as these guys are running up to my machine gunner, I'm trying to set up said machine gunner and he is almost killed on the first mission. Not a great way to start. Use the tactical pause, hit spacebar, and make sure you set up your people first. What you can also see over here are those logs that my soldiers are taking cover behind. You got full cover, half cover, and no cover. The less cover you have, the more damage you take, as you might imagine. Now, my machine gunner has been healed up thanks to the medic. And I actually have a bonus medic, because there was one on the mission that you can get in case you didn't bring your own, or in case your own might be, I don't know, um, incapacitated or out of medicine. So, let's get up to this camp. Shit. Guy in full cover. You can either grenade him out of this position, or, and this is uh, something which I thought was going to be a bit trickier than it actually is, you can run at the guy with a bayonet. You can just do a bayonet charge. Um, I'm not sure exactly how fast this guy can run, but he accelerated like a bat out of hell once I told him to go after this guy with a bayonet charge. Look at him go. And he just charges the guy. Not a chance in hell. <laughs> he just instantly eliminated the guy up on the hill. Now, thankfully, stealth is also an option. You don't always have to shoot your way through every situation. Sometimes you'll simply not have the firepower. And if you're detected, you're going to get overwhelmed rather quickly. You're still a very small unit caught behind enemy lines. It's not like you have an army of 80 to 100 soldiers you can deploy. I currently have six. So, time to do some stealthy killing. And all you have to do here is make sure your soldiers are in stealth mode, which is something you can enable by hitting the Y button or by clicking the silent mode, and then telling your soldier to engage. There's no silenced pistols, silenced rifles, or at least I don't have them yet if they're, in part, well, if they're part of the game at all. So we're just going to have to knife the guy. Then we find the camp. And here you can see what the value of the tactical pause is going to be. As my soldiers are in stealth mode, I have some time to set up where I want to attack from. So I'm going to look for some positions of high cover. I'm going to find what positions might be best for my machine gun. And here is the tactical view. Tactical view, tactical pause. Uh, I misexplained that, but it's the tactical view that the game calls it. And with this, I can set up the machine gun. Once the machine gun is set up, it's going to be a lot more accurate. And as such, once I tick everybody off of stealth mode, once everybody's ready to engage, we're going to open up and unleash hell on these two unsuspecting red soldiers. You don't have to do it this way. And this is where your options come in. If you find this to be a bit tedious, or maybe you're low on ammunition, but you still have grenades, you can simply toss a grenade. That is an option and, well, it will most definitely leave a mark on the Red Army. These guys will most likely not survive. So, let's make sure I have a couple of guys in the right positions. Fortunately, they're not looking my way, so I have the opportunity to sneak up on them. And let's get the other medic set up over there on the right-hand side in case my sniper here takes fire. Sorry, my scouts, I'm not called snipers. Everybody ready? Keep in mind, if you hit right-click with a soldier, they will try to knife them. So you simply tick them off of stealth mode. And off we go. Targets are down. 
This is how you can use the tactical pausing, tactical view to figure out what the best plan of approach could be. I'm not saying there is necessarily a best one because it's going to vary on your playstyle, it's going to vary on your squad, and it's going to vary per situation. So keep flexible, keep your options open, and use the tactical view to ascertain what the best course of action might be. After a while, we've found the trucks. Thankfully, I have a grenadier, and he's eager to set these things on fire. So let's toss a grenade in there, considering they were artillery trucks. This should go up quite nicely. Thankfully, this whole base is for some reason completely undefended. So this was rather easy, and this is why I said that it's most likely going to be part of the onboarding process. As your soldiers point out, this bridge that we do need to cross could be a perfect ambush. So we're going to have to scout out the place first. And this is where your scouts come in. Your scout has an active ability called scouting or binoculars. And with that, you can suddenly see a heck of a lot farther. Thankfully, it doesn't cost any resources, it only costs you a little time, which, yes, arguably in its own is a bit of a resource. Now, let's scout the place out and see exactly what is going on. Initially, I thought you just need to click the map because it looked like an active ability, but this is not actually true. You need to click the ability and then click exactly where you want to scout. The first bit is clear. There's no Russians directly on the other side of the bridge. But once you click over there, holy crap, <laughs> that's a lot of Russians. Uh, what you don't know can kill you, so we're going to have to set up an ambush. And again, this is where the machine gun comes in. This is where you set up the machine gun, this is where you create the ambush, and this is where you use the funnel slash bottleneck of this bridge to come or to cut down anything that happens to come your way. We take no prisoners, we don't have enough room on the train, and I don't think the Red Army is particularly keen on taking prisoners themselves. Now, some people I will keep in the back, like the medics, they only have handguns, um, and considering how much firepower your machine gun has, and potentially augment it with a grenade, I didn't throw one because I thought I might be able to get away with it with a machine gun, and I was right. Um, the grenades are a secondary option, and uh, well, there we go. They didn't survive. Now, remember when I said that the train also comes into play? The train has artillery guns. And we're not afraid to use them. But, as you might see, there's only a little bit of availability of this particular action. So, don't go using it all the time, because you simply don't have the ammunition. Of course, you might be able to buy more ammunition once you get to the strategic map, but that's not really going to be of much use during a particular mission. So let's get everybody grouped up, let's go across the bridge and let's get those resources that we need to keep our journey going. Once you've completed your mission, or maybe not completed your mission, but you're just desperately to get out, make your way to an exit area and your squad is going to be able to get back to the train. You can leave squad members behind if you absolutely have to, but I would much rather not. Soldiers are very valuable, especially, as you can see in this screen, once they get promoted, you can assign medals, which, as far as I've seen, is basically a big XP bonus. This is going to allow your soldier to reach a new rank, and as they do that, all sorts of interesting abilities get opened up. For example, Maximilian here got promoted, and as he's now a Lance Corporal, he's going to be able to get a new stat point to one of the stats that I find important. This is where soldier customization is going to play a big role. What sort of traits do you want your soldiers to have, both inside of combat and out? Because keep in mind, these people not only work inside of a squad, they can also get a task when the train is running. So at that point, they won't need a gun, but you might need an engineer to keep your train running. So what I can do over here is select any of the roles that the game has allowed me to pick here. Some of them will have stat requirements, such as intelligence and willpower. Some of them might have charisma stats, so uh, some of them might not even be available to my soldiers yet. But once you have them, you can have, for example, a general rifleman crossed with a medic. Or you can have a machine gunner who also works as a cook in his off time. 
Or, well, is that off time? I mean, he's still on the job. We're all trying to get home. Somebody has to cook. The soldiers will have tasks like these inside of combat and out. It does mean that losing a soldier or losing a squad member during a mission is going to hit you a lot harder. If, for example, your sniper dies, or your scout in this case, that is unfortunate. But if he also happens to be one of the few engineers of your train, and you now find yourself unable to fix things, that one loss of one scout slash engineer during the mission might cause the whole train to come grinding to a halt. So be very careful whether or not you give these people tasks to do on the train, or if you're just going to have them do pure combat roles, such as a scout medic combination. When it comes to, let's say, non-combat roles, this is also where your crew management skills come in. Over here, I have the artillery car. There's currently two workers on the cannon post, but I can also assign somebody to the machine gun post. It is going to require manpower. Manpower, that means that they will potentially need more food because they're working harder. Or, well, when they're working on the machine gun, or let's say standing guard at the machine gun, they might not be able to cook if they have such a skill. So this is where crew management starts to become a pretty important role. And it might very well impact your ability to make it all the way to Vladivostok. During your travels and missions, you might sometimes come across other legionnaires who are willing to join you. Some of them might be new soldiers, some of them might just be crew members, some of them might be very, very valuable, uh, some of them might be utterly useless. This is again where crew management comes in, this is where resource management comes in, and with these you can get additional soldiers to your squad. As far as I know, there's no recruit button, which makes sense because we're not playing a game where you can easily get new troops. We're stuck behind enemy lines. We're just going to have to make do with whoever we find out there. As we depart from the train station that we just, well, sort of cleared, we can have a look at the resources. One of these is fuel. As you can see, my total fuel consumption is going to vary as the speed of the train varies. Faster train, faster fuel consumption, so pick wisely. With the money or other resources, you might be able to get additional fuel, and sometimes you can find coal just lying around in missions. So with that, you'll be able to get additional coal to keep the train going. Now, some of my soldiers did get injured a little bit, and this is where the hospital car comes in. You do have to assign them there, and you might also have to assign the right amount of food. If you have a soldier that you find utterly useless, you can, I suppose, put them on a starving menu, i.e. Uh, you just don't get any food. But whether the rest of the squad slash the rest of the people traveling on the train are going to take particular issue with that, uh, it's up to you how you want to treat your people. Now, this is where I'm going to leave you at the end of this video. I really hope that you check out this game, not just because it's a sponsored video, because I find it really interesting. It's an era as well as an area that I just don't know a whole lot about. And playing this felt like well, you're pretty much reading a book, except that you're also getting choices about how the book progresses. It's like one of those interactive movies, but you also do the combat. Check it out. Link down below in the description. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys think. Let me know about that down below in the comments. And again, if you want to check it out, link down below in the description as well as the pinned comment. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. And I'll see you soon for more videos.